same kind of a microwave setting that I use for growing gold and, and converting, getting gold out of glass and getting uh, uh, rhodium and iridium out of black sand. Black sand contains about 10% rhodium and iridium, and most commercial glass, bottle glass, pickle jar glass, contains from uh, 15 to 20 ounces a ton of gold. And you can, anything that has quartz in it has gold in it, but it's in monatomic form. So it's in a form that doesn't really, but when you put it in a microwave and cook it, it adds electrons and converts these the diamagnetic fields, which were Meissner fields of electrons, back into real electrons, and they become metallic, and we get metal out of it. And I got samples and pictures. Of it. Metal gold, yeah. Gold. So, so are yeah, we in the wrong business? Why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> making gold. Thank you for told us something. Actually, it's this. this. <laughs> <laughs> it's converting. <laughs> <laughs> gold that was made in the microwave. Gold made in the microwave. Everybody is in microwave. Why, why don't they all make gold? Instead of going to work in the morning. The reason this gold is a little lighter color than the regular gold because it has platinum in it. This gold, this little it's sample of gold, came out of the beer bottle. You take the huh? typical what, platinum, the platinum the impurity. I can take impurity. Oh. I want impurity. John, can you please use the microphone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so the gold I got here is a little lighter color than regular gold because it has platinum in it. And we got this gold, came out of oh. nothing, beer bottles. Yeah. Yeah. How, many? How much beer do you have to drink? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, yes, the the problem is you drink too much beer, you overmelt the stuff and you have a meltdown. And I, believe me, I went to about eight or ten microwaves just trying to get the temperature. <laughs> the biggest problem in working with microwaves is controlling the temperature. You can't put a thermocouple in there. You have to learn to get an eyeball on a temperature. Oh you can goodness. see that. I have it on these charts. You can, if you heat it for about ten minutes, it comes red heat. In 15 minutes, it becomes orange heat, and then another 10 minutes becomes yellow heat. And you're up around 1,100 degrees centigrade, and you end at that temperature, now you can melt and cast almost anything in there. Uh, I've even melted magnetite at 1,500C and aluminum oxide at 2,200C. It's just the insulation and, and, uh, that represents, and the quality of your crucible represents how high our temperature can get. And of course, if it gets too hot, the microwave turns off. So we got the people working with commercial microwaves where you could run for hours without melting down. I'm going to take a peek now and see how close we are to getting melted. So you're saying the chamber itself gets too hot? Yeah, the whole microwave, they have thermal cutoffs. But if you get a commercial one, they're designed to have cooling units in them and you could run them longer. They're running about 3,000 bucks. You could buy them. And you said you have to take a look at ten of them? You can just take a quick peek here and you can see that's pretty hot. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's hard to see. There we go. And that was in there for 15 minutes. Yeah. Now, I'm going to put my sample of oh, So what's this your got silver in it? And I'm going to melt this silver in another 10 minutes. It'll be hot enough to cast. What's the white blocks made of? Lightweight insulation. It's a, it's a high aluminum silicate. It's a very lightweight material. Really? And it's a good insulation. It'll take uh, about. And it doesn't heat up in there. No, well, well right away it goes right through. So is that silver you made or you bought? No, that's regular store bought and silver. Regular silver. Sure you. I can't do the gold process. Can you pick up the mic again, please, John? Look underneath. But it's the same equipment, same process. Mm -hmm. Anyone interested? I will hold the mic. Yeah. yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Anyone interested in learning this process? I got a DVD called Growing Gold. It goes about an hour and a half, and it, it gives you, it describes all the equipment and procedures needed. And I sold about fifty or hundred of them, and they're about. Five people now that are making gold using the oh massive process. Do you have cards? How much does it cost? <laughs> and I have DVD. So DVD. Can't twenty bucks for the DVD. How much is the DVD? Twenty. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Okay. Twenty bucks. I'll buy one. I'll buy one too. John, anything more you want to say about it? About the DVD? Yeah. Well, I mean about the process. Process. Yeah. Well, did you get but, one? No, yeah. not yet. Mm -hmm. I should never give money first, then they ask you. Did you get one? <laughs> he put the mic down. <laughs> so is it, it's running right now. we got 15 minutes to go here. 15 more moles to go? Into, oh, half an into, hour? Uh, yeah. into, I mean, getting rhodium, rhodium out of black sand. And, and uh, we got a full description of it. Here's the rhodium and here's the rhodium. 
Rhodium and rhodium and a black sand have a full report on that. Rhodium is twice as expensive. It's more, it's more expensive. And the whole extraction of the equipment that you use, the, the melt and the crucibles and everything they need. John? Why gold? Why iridium? Why silver? Why these metals? Why not others? Because They're more precious. The ones I, the no, no, no. Of the mic, a center of the pick up the mic. Pick up the mic. He knows. Yeah. I see. The, yeah. the elements in the center of the periodic table, down near the bottom, that's the gold, platinum, palladium, rhodium, all the precious elements. They're, they have a, a, a structure where when they uh, exist a single atom, they call what they call armus material. Armus means orbitable, rearranged, monatomic element. The outer electron... Who's the guy that gave it that name? David Hudson. David Hudson, armus materials. I talk about it. I actually have some quotes from him and some rewrites about what David Hudson did. He says, everything you walk on, everything you breathe, everything you drink contains precious elements of gold, platinum. Look at I got goosebumps. Huh? <laughs> that's that's, that's <laughs> Absolute truth. <laughs> it contains these precious elements. And the trick is most of them are monatomic, they have no electrons, they have chemically inert material, and they had to be activated to bring them back. So, John, are One you of saying. secrets in making, getting it out of the thing is to add graphite, because any crystal structure, the edges of graphite, crystals have extra electrons, so you got to add electrons to bring it back. So that was one of the secrets I developed. It's in this right up here. So what made you think of that? What made you think to do that? Well, Hudson says that they lose electrons, and everybody else has been working with it, trying to develop techniques of adding electrons. I know a guy taking water and making monatomic water by separating it with magnetic fields, then taking that water and running electrons into it and it. He gets eight percent gold out of water. So, so John, would it be fair to say that there are more than one kinds of gold? Is that what you're saying? There's well, there's regular gold and there's Ormus gold. There's a whole series of elements gold. that are monotonic. You have to redesign a, a periodic table of materials that don't exist on the physical here, if you want to call it that. But they fit the very small atoms. They fit interstitially within the structure of regular atoms. So any crystal structure, uh, rhodium, iridium. Uh, quartz, I mean, I mean, quartz or, or can be modified. Yeah, a any limestone, all these oh. things here. Bill has been doing that too. Bill, this took my table. Bill's going to go later, go. later today. He's, He's going to do something similar. On, but he uses that stuff. He, he melts them in a big crucible like this. And he's, he's, he's telling all the information. So, so John, what's it going to take for somebody else to, do, to duplicate what you're doing here today? Buy the tape and practice and burn out half a dozen microphones. <laughs> learn how to control the temperature. Temperature controls the big thing. And, and make sure you keep your gloves on and, and stuff. And stay at least three or four feet away from the microwave. No matter how good they are, they all leak a little bit. And you just go in and out when you're cooking here. And, and uh, practice a lot. Practice, practice. You know what they say? An alchemist, repeat, repeat, repeat. And also, another secret, the alchemist is part of the process. That's what's not written down. That's why all these guys couldn't follow their form. They get their notebooks in. You have to believe in it. You have to think. You set out the right vibes. The matter it likes to be loved. <laughs> <laughs> and that's part of it. We, we, we are the creators. We are, we are, God said, look, you kids, get down here and continue. I started these laws of physics and chemistry. Get down here and finish this creation process. And, and, and use your talents, and you can judge on how much you use your talents, and you, you, you do it by being a nice guy. If you do that, you move on to the next level. So, so John, we, we, got 12, we got 12 minutes to go. <laughs> when 12 minutes is up, what are we going to see? Well, I'm going to pour it right now. I think it oh. might be higher. Okay. Take a look. John, what do you usually use as your base material to get gold? Uh, container glass, uh, pickle jars, cheap uh, uh, taste of choice. Uh, okay. It's got to be a glass. So glass is a good source. And, and John, where do you get this? Where do you get this special dirt? How do you, you just take dirt out of your backyard and get gold? In Albuquerque, we have Sandia Mountain, which is 11,000 feet high. Can anybody do this, no matter where they live? Or? Most black sands, most all crystal materials, quartz, uh, uh, limestone. Even if, even Most in Minnesota, the material has these has elements in it. Do you mean like black sand magnetite? Yeah, see? black sand magnetite. Okay, right. yeah. I'm Let's trying. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I try get that as cement color. He's, he's well. He's focused here. All right, here we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Here we're gonna go. All right. It's not quite melted. A little bit more. It's another ten, oh, wait, another ten minutes. Okay, you gotta love it.
Uh, maybe <laughs> that one. I'm giving you back the mic. Okay, it's not quite melted yet, but probably another five minutes we'll be kissing. The right. point I'm making is you can heat things high enough to do this in a, in a commercial microwave, a storeboard. I started out by going to Target's for 39 bucks. I bought a 600 watt microwave, and I was melting metal in that within a couple of days. The reason I got into Magnetite because I live in Albuquerque and send you mountain is about a mile. Yeah. Drink too much beer, you over melt the stuff and you have a meltdown. And I, believe me, I went to about eight or ten microwaves just trying to get the temperature. <laughs> the biggest problem in working with microwaves controlling the temperature, you can't put a thermocouple in there. You have to learn to get an eyeball on a temperature. Oh my you can see that. I have it on these charts. Here. You can, if you heat it for about ten minutes, it comes red heat. In 15 minutes, it becomes orange heat, and then another 10 minutes becomes yellow heat. And you're up around 1,100 heat degrees centigrade, and you end at that temperature, now you can melt and cast almost anything in there. Uh, I've even melted magnetite at 1,500C and aluminum oxide at 2,200C. It's just the insulation and, and, uh, that represents, and the quality of your crucible represents how high our temperature can get. And of course, if it gets too hot, the microwave turns off. So we got the people working with commercial microwave where you could run for hours without melting down. I'm going to take a peek now and see how close we are to getting melted. So you're saying the chamber itself gets too hot? Yeah, the whole microwave, they have thermos cutoffs. But if you get a commercial one, they're designed to have cooling units in them and you could run them longer. They're running about 3,000 bucks. You could buy and you said you have to take a look at ten of them? You can just take a quick peek here lovely. and you can see that's pretty hot. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh, it's hard to see. There we go. Well, that was in there for 15 minutes. Yeah. Now I'm going to put my sample of So what's so your silver in it? And I'm going to melt this silver in another 10 minutes, rating it with magnetic fields. Then taking that water and running electrodes into it and telling it, I think it's 8% gold out of water. So, so John, would it be fair to say that there are more than one kinds of gold? Is that what you're saying? There's well, there's regular gold and there's Ormus gold? There's a whole series of elements gold. that are monotonic. We had to redesign a, a periodic table of materials that don't exist on the physical here, if you want to call it that. But they fit the very small atoms. They fit interstitially within the structure of regular atoms, or any crystalline structure, uh, rhodium, iridium, uh, quartz, I mean, I mean quartz, or, or can we modify it? Yeah, any limestone, all these oh. things here. Bill has been doing that too. Bill this took my table. Bill's going to go later go, later today. He's, he's going to do something similar. On, but he uses that stuff. He, he melts them in a big crucible like this, and he's He's, he's selling all the information. So, so John, what's it going to take for somebody else to, to, to duplicate what you're doing here today? Buy the tape and practice and burn out half a dozen microphones. Yeah. <laughs> learn how to control the temperature. Temperature control is a big thing. And, and make sure you keep your gloves on and, and stuff. And stay at least three or four feet away from the microwave. No matter how good they are, they all leak a little bit. And you just go in and out when you're cooking here. And, and uh, practice a lot. Practice, practice. You know what they say? And now, chemists, repeat, repeat, repeat. And also, another secret the alchemist is part of the process. That's what's not written down. That's why all these guys couldn't follow their form. They get their notebooks. And you have to believe in it. You have to think. You set out the right vibes. No matter it likes to be loved. <laughs> Rhodium and iridium out of black sand. Black sand contains about 10% rhodium and iridium, and most commercial glass, bottle glass, pickle jar glass, contains from uh, 15 to 20 ounces a ton of gold. And you can, anything that has quartz in it has gold in it, but it's in monotonic form. So it's in a form that doesn't be any. But when you put it in the microwave and cook it, it adds electrons and converts these the diamagnetic fields, which were Meissner fields of electrons, back into real electrons, and they become metallic, and we get metal out of it. And I got samples and pictures of this. Metal gold, yeah. Gold. So, are yeah, we in the wrong business? Why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> we should be making gold. Have you told us something? Actually, it's this. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> gold was made in the microwave. Gold made in the microwave. Everybody is a microwave. Why, why don't they all make gold? Instead of going to work in the morning. The reason this gold is a little lighter gold than the regular gold because it has platinum in it. This gold, this little sample of gold, came out of the beer bottle. Huh? The platinum, platinum impurity, I can take impurity. <laughs> like I want impurity. John, can you please use the microphone? <laughs> yeah, and so the gold I got here is a little lighter color than regular gold because it has platinum in it. And we got this gold, came out of nothing, beer bottles. Yeah. How, How many? How much beer do you have to drink? <laughs> <laughs> What's the white blocks made of? Lightweight insulation. It's a, it's a high aluminum silicate. It's a very lightweight material. Really? It has a good insulation. It will take tw uh, about 1300 C. And it doesn't heat up in there? No. Well, the light wave goes right through. Yeah. So is that silver you made or you bought? No, that's regular store-bought and silver. Regular store -bought. I can't do the gold parts. Can you pick up the mic again, please, John? Look underneath it. But it's the same equipment, same process. Mm -hmm. and stuff. Anyone's interested in hold the mic. Yeah. 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 Anyone, yeah. Anyone interested in learning this process, I got a DVD called Growing Gold. It goes about an hour and a half, and it, it, gives you, it describes all the equipment and procedures needed. And I've sold about 50 or 100 of them, and they're about five people now that are making gold using the oh massive process. Do you have cards? How much does it cost? <laughs> and I have for DVDs. those who can afford it. Bucks for the DVD. How much is the DVD? 20. 20 bucks. Okay. I'll buy one. 20 bucks. I'll buy one too. John, anything more you want to say about it? About the DVD, yeah. Well, I mean about the process. Process, yeah. Well, did you get but, No, not yet. Mm -hmm. I should never give money first, then they ask you. Did you get one? <laughs> he put the mic down. Second one. <laughs> yeah, no, so, so is it? It's running right now. We got 15 minutes to go here. 15 minutes more to go? Into oh, half an into, hour. Uh, yeah. Into I mean, getting rhodium rhodium out of black sand, and and uh, we got a full description of it. Here's the rhodium and here's the rhodium. Rhodium and rhodium out of black sand. I have a full report on that. Rhodium is twice as expensive. It's more, it's more expensive, and the whole extraction of the equipment that you use, the, the melt is in the crucible, and everything they need. John? Why gold? Why iridium? Why silver? Why these metals? Why not others? Because because more precious. The ones <laughs> and no, no, no. Of the mic, a center of the pick up the mic. Pick up the mic. He knows. Yeah. The, the elements in the center of the periodic table, down near the bottom. That's the gold, platinum, palladium, rhodium, all the precious elements. The, they have a, a, a structure where, when they uh, exist a single atom, they call what they call ormus material. Ormus means orbitable rearranged monatomic element. The outer electron. Who's the guy that gave it that name? David. Hudson. David Hudson, Ormus Materials. Talk about it. I actually have some quotes from him and some rewrites about what David Hudson did. He says, everything you walk on, everything you breathe, everything you drink contains precious elements of gold, platinum. Look at I got goosebumps. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a sign of absolute truth. It, it contains these precious elements. And the trick is most of them are monatomic. They have no electrons. They have chemically inert materials. And they had to be activated to bring them back. So, John, are One you saying... secrets... And making, getting it out of the thing is to add graphite because any crystal structure, the edges of graphite, crystals have extra electrons, so you got to add electrons to bring it back. So that was one of the secrets I developed. It's in this right up here. So what made you think of that? What made you think to do that? Well, Hudson says that they lose electrons and everybody else has been working with it, trying to develop techniques of adding electrons. I know a guy taking water and making monatomic water by... Right,